Hey everybody, how's it going? Jamie Fenn here back yet with another video. Today I'm going to talk about the X-Rite Color Checker Video Passport. Now I did do a tutorial on this in the past, but I'm going to talk about a bunch of things today that I did not cover in that previous video. Now if you're wondering what a color checker is or why you may need one, well the color checker is essentially a filmmaking tool or a photography tool, but in this case it's for filmmaking and it's a tool that allows you to get proper exposure make fine-tuned hue and saturation adjustments with these color chips, and most importantly, nail white balance and get proper skin tones. Okay, so why would you need one of these? Well, in case you didn't know this, your camera's color science tries its best to record what true colors are, but then when you bring it into post and you look at the footage and you start looking at these color chips and looking at your scopes, specifically the vector scope, you'll realize that your colors are not exactly what they should be. So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use this color checker in DaVinci Resolve, but you can use it in any video editor of your choice. If you like videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and comment down below and let me know what you think about my process. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's say you just got your color checker in the mail and you're ready to use it, but what's the first step? I'm going to talk to you about my process here in the studio, but this can also apply to any shooting environment that you're in. The first thing I like to do is I set up my camera equipment. Then I set up my lights and kind of eyeball it to the way I want it to look. Next, you want to set white balance, and there's two ways you can go about this. The first way is you can just match your color temperature of your camera to what the color temperature is of your key light. The other way is if your camera is capable of doing this, you can set a custom white balance by going to the white balance card in the color checker and then just setting it manually in the camera. The next thing we want to do is set proper exposure. I use a Panasonic GH5 and I shoot in the V-Log color profile. What I like to do is I set my middle gray, which is this middle white gray bar here, and I set it to 42 IRE. I look at the false color on my external monitor, and I just make sure that that middle gray is sitting at that 42, 43 IRE mark. If you don't have a false color monitor, you can set your in-camera zebras to 90%, and when you see the bright white top bar have zebras on it, you've exposed properly. Now you're ready to record your video, but make sure as soon as you hit the record button, you display the white balance card, and then you also flip it over, make sure your hands are out of the way, put the card where you exposed it, and start recording. So once you're done with your video, let's go ahead and import your footage and get started. Okay, so once you've imported your footage, you want to come over to the color tab, and you want to scroll to the point in the clip where you're holding the white balance card up. Come over here to the node section, and let's just add a new node. So on our first node, we want to select white balance. We can mask this out and look at our scopes, or we can come down here to our white balance picker, which is down here in the left-hand corner, come up, click on that white card, and there we go. Let's add another node. Next, we want to scroll to the point where we hold up the whole checker. Now, you can hold it horizontally, or you can hold it vertically. With the way I do my process, it works for me horizontally, but either way works. So once you've created a new node, you want to come over here and select the drop down menu and select the color chart. That brings up a default chart like that. And you just want to drag the corners of this chart to match up with the color checker that you're holding. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in. If you look closely, there's these little corners that you want to match up this layout to. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you've done that, you want to come over here to the color checker or the color match option and select it. Then with the drop down menu, you want to select your color checker. There's a variety here, but we're using the X-Ray color checker passport video. So let's select that. Next, we want to select our source gamma. Now I shot in V-Log, you can shoot in Rec. 709. These are the options here but I'm going to go down to the very bottom and select V-Log. I'm going to leave my target gamma at Rec. 709. I'm going to leave my target color space at Rec. 709, leave the color temp at 6500, and select Match. After you click Match, let's create another node. By default, it'll come up with this color checker again, so let's just turn this off by selecting the Off over here on that drop-down menu. Let's come in here to the Power Windows, select the pen tool and click and make a square around these three exposure chips. Next, let's select the one up here in the left-hand corner. Come over here to our scopes. 
and bring up the big scope by clicking on those arrows that expands the scopes. And let's select our waveform. Once you bring up your waveform, let's go ahead and click on our curves. And as you can see, I'm going to hold down Option and scroll in. You can see that there's a little bit of blue that needs to come up. So let's click on the blue and drag this up until it matches. It should turn white when they all match up. So that's just kind of like a good indication that you've matched up the highlights correctly. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and scroll out. And I'm going to click on the Y and drag it up to right about the 1023 mark. Now the values of the bright white range from 90 to 100. So if you bring the highlights up to the top, you may still have things that are blown out in your scene. So you're going to have to determine what's best for you. So you can kind of play with how your whole scene is, but for the most part, you want to focus on these midtones. Let's put these midtones right above that 384 mark. Then what I like to do is zoom into the midtones for this middle gray. And as you can see, the blue is a little high. So I'm going to select the blue again. I'm going to come down to the curves a little bit below halfway and pull this down just a little bit like that. And as you can see, it matches up pretty perfectly. I'm going to double check my highlights. They separated it a little bit, so I need to adjust again. So I'm going to bring the blue up, maybe even bring the green down the slightest amount. And these are very small adjustments that we're making here. As far as the shadows and the black point, that looks pretty good to me. Next, let's exit out of that window. Let's click on our power window, turn off that power window, turn off the wand. And now we have this image. So then, the next thing we want to do is create another new node. Select the power window option again. Click on that pen tool. And now let's select these six chromatic color chips. So I'm going to draw a line around them like that. I'm going to come over to the scopes. I'm going to expand the scopes. This time I'm going to select the vector scope. And I want to make sure I turn on the wand tool so we're only seeing the selection of our mask. And now you can see we have these points that we have to work with. And our goal is to basically put each of these points in these boxes here. And before we start to adjust them, you want to make sure you have your two times zoom on. So the first thing we want to do is we come down to our curves and we want to select our second option here where it says hue versus hue. Select each of these colors as it correlates with each of the colors that we've selected. Next, drag up or down and try to point those dots at each one of those boxes. So as you can see, I'm just kind of dragging up and down, just kind of seeing, eyeballing it from here. We can come back and make fine-tune adjustments, but for right now, let's just try to eyeball it and point it at those boxes. Next, let's select the hue versus saturation option, which is that third little dot. And let's go ahead and select each of these colors once again. And this is saturation. So what we want to do now is basically push saturation until those little dots end up in those boxes like that. So yellow doesn't quite reach and either does green. So what happens when you run into this issue? You can come over here to the color wheels and we can click on saturation and just bring it up until the lowest color chip fits inside the box. Then we can come back to our curves and we can kind of just tone everything back down. We can just pull the red back down. The yellow can come down just a little bit like that. Green seems to look good. Cyan can come up a little bit as well. Blue can get pulled back down again. And then magenta can get pushed back up. Now I'm somewhat of a perfectionist. I see that the blue is kind of not really in the box. So I do want to adjust it until it's somewhat in the middle. Great. So now let's turn off our wand. Let's turn off our power window so it affects the whole image. And now we have, after that adjustment, we have an image that looks like this. As far as getting to this point, this gives you a pretty good neutral looking image. And what I like to do is actually add one more node and come down and add a little bit more saturation. So depending on your footage, you may or may not want to do this but I typically just kind of push a little bit more saturation. It gives a little bit more warm color. So once you've done all that, 
and you want to make even more fine-tuned adjustments to your image. Maybe something doesn't just look right to you. Maybe your skin tones look a little off. You can create another node. You can come in here and select a power window and you can select the skin tone line here. Just like that. Turn on our power window. Turn on our wand. Look at our vector scope. And you can see that some of the uh, the colors, you know, they all pretty much line up on the skin tone indicator. If you don't have that indicator, you can select it in your settings here and show skin tone indicator. Now, it may match up there, but you still may not look right. For example, I look kind of red. I did get a little bit of sun. This is probably what I naturally look like. But if you really wanted to make another adjustment, you could turn off this power window, come in here with your eyedropper tool, select your skin, turn on that wand, and then maybe even make like a quick power window around the face like this. Pull up your vector scope and you can see there that obviously my face is very red. You can actually come back into your curves, your hue versus hue, and select the red, yellow, and maybe even some of the cyan. And we can just go ahead and pull down on that red until all the red in this window kind of matches up. I don't mind going a little towards the the red side, but I do look a little sunburned, so that's okay. And if you don't want the power window, you can turn this off and there you go. If you guys want to check out my other color grading videos or my visual effects videos, check out this playlist right here. And until next time, have a good one and I'll see you in my next video.